it's Tuesday, Tuesday. Gotta get on a Tuesday. <laughs> Yay, it's Tuesday. We're so glad you're here. <laughs> You've heard of Rebecca Black. Now you got Jenny Green. <laughs> I was waiting for that joke to come. I was going to let you make it. If you didn't make it within the next like five or six seconds, I would have oh, done it. Oh, silver platter. If I, I know, didn't right? Make I, it. it was there. It was coming. Oh, man. Y'all, we're so glad you're here today. Um, today, we're talking about dinner party etiquette, uh, both for the host and for the guests. So um, now that people are being social again, we've got some tips for how to not uh, do things that annoy the bejesus out of people who are at the dinner party with you. Yay. Right, right. And today we have Caitlin, who is the ultimate dinner party guest. She can work the room like an extrovert, or she can sit in the corner with you while you eat. Oh, I love that. I can also sit in the corner and eat all of the guacamole. And I will be the one who goes and finds your pets at the party. So I'm really ah. good at those things. <laughs> also good at taking something from like a level of funny to a level of now everyone's uncomfortable with the joke that I just made. So <laughs> if you're really into that, have me over. I'm really good at those things. Oh, Jenny over there, you are my beautiful, sassy mannequin all come to life. Yay. I love you. I love it. Like that movie that had... Wasn't it um... called The Mannequin? Oh, there was a, there was a movie called Mannequin. I am thinking of the Christmas movie that my sister loved, that had um, that girl who won Miss America, and then she lost it because she like posed in penthouse or yeah, something. Yeah, I don't know who that was, but I know what you're talking about. And it's um, the name of the movie is like Life Size. Life or something. Size, it's like a Barbie that well, yeah, comes to life. Uh, didn't Tyra Banks? Is it a Christmas movie? Didn't Tyra Banks do a movie Tyra like Banks? that? Okay, maybe it's Tyra Banks. She did oh a movie God. where she was like know. a life-size Barbie. Okay, so it must speaking be of Barbie, so maybe I'm this is completely unrelated. We have to go see the Barbie movie. We have to go see it. It's our yes. friend date. We're gonna go do it. We just talked about dating your friends. This is what we're gonna do anyway. Right. Okay, let's catch up. It. What's going on? Okay. All right. So, I went to go get my hair done, and um, those of you who are uh, listeners and have been with us since the beginning, you know that I get my hair cut at a place that is above a grocery store mm -hmm. and um, uh, specializes in men's cuts <laughs> and fades because that's the name of the place. Yes. And um, I wasn't able to get in to get my roots worked on, my roach roots. Um, <laughs> I wasn't able to get those worked on before coming back from Christmas break. And um, because I'm a little bit vain and I don't want the kids to see all of my growth, <laughs> I just colored my hair red in the kitchen, in the kitchen sink, like with a box from Target. Whatever. And even as I'm doing it, my 11 year old daughter is saying, mom, Letty is going to come at you. <laughs> you know, you should not be coloring your hair. Last time you did this, she yelled at you. So I come in this weekend to see her and as I walk in to cuts and fades and have a seat she looks at me while she's working with another customer and says where are your highlights oh. oops did you color your hair again <laughs> and I just looked at her I said well Abby said that you were gonna be mad yeah she said, I'm mad good girl <laughs> Abby and for the rest of the three and a half hour appointment, she is berating me on coloring my own hair and saying, don't do it. I don't know what's in those boxes. I don't know what kind of chemicals you put on there. I could accidentally turn your hair orange and then you'll be mad at me, even though it's not my fault. She's got a point. She says, next time you are about to walk into Target, you come here and I will just fit you in between people. It might take all day, but I will color your okay. hair. Do not do anything impulsive again. And then um, she does my color, she does my highlights, cut, you know, whatever. And she's styling me. And she gave me a middle part. Oh, have you come over to the dark side? Do you love it? Okay, so I haven't had a middle part since right? middle school. And I think I might love yeah. it. Do I love it because it's trendy or do I actually love it? I don't know. I keep thinking of Rodgers and Hammerstein's uh, Cinderella. Do I love you 
because you're beautiful? <laughs> I don't know. Or are you beautiful? Because I love you. Because yeah. I love you. Yeah, so, I don't know. But um, I'm into I, it right now. Here's the thing. I've always been into a middle part, but only if my hair is straight. If my hair is curly, I don't mm. like how the, like, it just kind of turns into a triangle. <laughs> right, right, right. It's not my thing. I I can imagine that. I cannot empathize sure. with it, though, because uh, my hair is bored straight. Yeah, no, time. my hair has some texture. It's curly most of the time. And it's, you can't tell right now because it's up in this hot mess of a bun. But um, I, if it's straight, I will middle part it every time. I just, I love how that look is. And I, I've always loved that for forever and when I go get it done yeah you are middle parting when I go get it done I always even with a bun I'm always like no middle part down the middle and she's like but you had you came in and it was off to the side and I'm like that's because it was dirty and curly like no part it down the middle that's how I want it done because otherwise it doesn't sit right when I part it down the middle so yeah I'm glad you're here it's a great place to be if you like it you like it and if you don't I rock both the side part and the middle so do you I'm keeping my skinny jeans, though. Yeah. Those aren't going anywhere. And I will wear a blanket scarf every time I drop below 50 degrees. Oh, well, uh, if we're talking about things that are, like, kind of outdated, have we already talked about the new show on Bravo, the SWV and Escape show? Escape show? No. Okay. So do you remember SWV and do you remember Escape? those R&B girl groups from the 90s. Okay, I remember Escape, but I do not remember SWV. Think, okay, um, think Free Willy. There's that song that has the girls singing with Michael Jackson in the background, and it's the Love Will Be Right Here song. That's SWV, okay? So I loved both of these groups when I was a kid. And if you are not a Bravo person... Um, you should know that Candy Burris, who is the lead singer of Escape, is one of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Oh, yes. yeah, she is. Um, also, spoiler alert, um, she may or may not have been on um, the Mask Singer. Yes, she was on. The, didn't she win the Mask Singer? She yeah. votes one. And John called it out for the first episode. He was like, oh, it's that chick from Real yeah. Housewives. <laughs> no, you know. You can tell it's her. <laughs> he was like, fly above. Right, fly exactly. Above. <laughs> Fly above all the haters. Exactly that. Okay, so Candy and the girls from Escape and SWV, the the three-person group, have decided that they are going to come together to create a reality show on Bravo TV, and it's them, like, on tour and figuring out the logistics of their shows. They are rehearsing when our power right? combined. They are rehearsing their R and B shows or R and B songs from the nineties, and I am jamming and loving the drama at the same time. This is the stuff of my nineties R and B dreams. I am so happy that this show exists, and my husband, who also has a Bravo thing, we both just really love it. He was like, "I need to watch that show." <laughs> Like just from the previews, like I'm, I'm interested. I'm ready. I'm ready. And I'm like, yeah, you are. You're going to watch it. And like me having a personal, like deep connection to the music that I lived as a kid is like, yeah, we're watching it. And he's like, no, I'm just here for the entertainment value. Like I, I need to watch that show. So we started watching it and it is exactly what my heart hoped it would be. So that's one of my obsessions right now is just, I that love it. Awesome. It's so good. It's so SWV good. and escape on Bravo TV. Escape. Escape. Yep. All right. So here comes my favorite part of the show. This is the time of the week. Um, This is your opportunity to either laugh alongside me or at me. And in this case, it is at me. Um, As our dedicated listeners know, both my children play flag football. Yes. The update to this season is John is coaching both teams. Oh, man. The four-year-olds and the 11-year-old girls. It's a lot of work. Right? Like, just just pick two more right. difficult teams right. to coach. <laughs> right. All right. So we've got preschoolers and we've got middle school mm-hmm. girls. Okay. So um, he was out in the front yard throwing the ball around with both kids. Abby uses a slightly smaller than regulation ball. Sure. 
And Kit, the four-year-old, his ball is very small because they have very right. small hands. Um, so small, in fact, that it fits in the storm oh, drain. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, in my mind, the ball goes down the storm drain, it's lost. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Right? Like, not a big deal. It's not going to, like, impact our ecosystem. Eventually, it'll flush out. We can, maybe it'll even come out in the pond by the end of our house, and we can pull it out of the pond. I don't know, (laughs) but the ball is gone. No, 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 no. John goes back into the house, gets all the tools that he needs to then remove the manhole cover and send Abby down. Like she's some coal miner in Pennsylvania to go get the ball out of the storm drain. And, and I only noticed as he was putting the manhole cover back Ah. on, so I couldn't even stop it. Okay. I was like, you did what? She's like, oh, it's fine. It's fine. She had to bend over when she got in there. It's not that deep. Uh, You just put our kid in the drain. Okay, hold on. Is it now and then? Please don't put my children in the Is it now and then where she goes into the storm? Is it now and then? And then she, like, gets washed away? Yeah. And you hear, like, is it, it's, what's her name? Teeny? Teensy? She's, like, crying and, like, oh, my, oh, my goodness. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm, like, I have to fan myself. What if if something happened? He said, Jen, it hasn't rained. Doesn't matter. It's fine. It's fine. Well, then, like, the next day is when the skies open up and it rains forever. And so I was just like, look, this could have happened. He's like, Jen, it's fine. It was dry. She could touch. She could reach out the top. I just, I couldn't fit through the manhole. So. Oh, man. Ah. Okay. Well, sorry. I'm like fanning my <laughs> like anxiety. Right. Okay. I'm so glad that I caught it at right. the end. Right. Because you would have been. Because I would not no. have let it happen. You would have been freaking out. Oh, no. Yeah. Mm-mm. Okay, I'm like, <laughs> put my kids in the sewer. He put my kid in the sewer. <laughs> Thank goodness she's tall. I would have gotten lost. <laughs> she's almost as tall as me. Oh, goodness. If not taller at this point. Okay, so um, full full disclosure here. I don't know the context around this story. I, I only know the mm. two lines that I heard from the story. I can gather that it happened around the time that we were supposed to be heading towards bedtime. So like at our house, it's like finish the homework, take a few more minutes to relax. Timer goes off and then it's, um, I hope the timer's telling us like it's time to clean up and go wash, like have a bath, have a shower, whatever it is. And then we're going to start the wind down process. So <laughs> it, I'm guessing it was like post timer during cleanup time. What time? timer go off like for me it's like 2 in the afternoon <laughs> it's a biological timer right it's just that idea that like oh it's time for me to wind down i need to go to sleep yes oh man well while my mind and body are telling me that 2 30 is the right time my child is still at school with that so i can't really use that oh okay so i guess he can't start winding down at no. 2 30 if he's still no. at school um but like 6 50 7 o'clock is when we start that wind down process for our family so um right around that time uh I'm hearing I'm like doing the dishes so you can't really hear everything that's happening going on behind me which is why I, I don't have the full context for the story but I turn off the sink just in time to hear my husband go to our son boy you sure made that difficult and without skipping a beat my son goes yeah well difficult is my middle name <laughs> right accurate right <laughs> sam difficult yes that works so perfectly yes. we're gonna change your initials yeah. we'll add it to your like list of nicknames no problem so um if you are oh, wondering if your child has difficult as a middle name there's a good chance that they might have already given it to themselves and you're not alone in that situation <laughs> because oof that was rough it makes me think of that comic where um, the dog says, Hi, I'm No No Bad Dog. What's your name? <laughs> oh, poor baby dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, goodness. Well, that's, that's the gems, folks. 
let's move into some real talk for this week. So we mentioned earlier that um, we're talking about dinner party etiquette, like how to be a good host and how to be a good guest. Um, I'm going to preface this by saying that I did not make all of this up. However, I am adding my own color commentary to this as Jenny will be, but I loved these tips. I thought they were really smart. This is from an article on Pure Wow by Sydney Meister or Meister. I'm not sure, but um, I will link that article in the show description so you can read it for yourself. Um, she had some like dinner party and like some sort of experts also contributing to her article. So some of what I'm going to say is not necessarily just my idea, but I am organizing this a little bit differently because I feel like it's important to draw a distinction between some of these behaviors as a guest and some of them as a host, which doesn't happen. I yes. see. I see. Was June Cleaver one of she her She was consultants? not. No. What about Emily Post? Um, there is someone who does mention an Emily Post thing in the article. Okay. I did not talk about Emily Post. However, I, of course, looked for that name. And yes, it's right. there. Okay. Those of you who are not familiar, Emily Post um, and the Emily Post dynasty um, write books on etiquette. And it used to be that the Emily Post guide, um, which, you know, probably was first published. I don't even know, like 1902. Um, but it's the go-to. And if you have been a bride, you've probably purchased an Emily Post wedding. Oh book. man. I don't know if I purchased that book, but I do know what you're talking about. And I think that I like went, I can't, I can't, I can't. There's too, are already too many things, yeah. right? Like there's so much. <laughs> so I just was like, no, 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 I can't. So I'm going to say this. We tell our child that good manners are how you keep yourself from being embarrassed in a social situation. Right. And that is just right. like, if you have good manners, you can hopefully ward off some social embarrassment. Now, if you're me, you have good manners and you still know how to make things awkward for your guests and for the people around you. So maybe that's just who you are. That said, um, a lot of this just comes down to like, just thinking about someone else in the moment. Right. So, okay. Right. So I'm going to start with the guest side of things for how you should behave at these okay. dinner parties. Remember, we're thinking dinner party or like cocktail party. We're not thinking like, you know, a rager, which I don't know how many of us are going to those. If you're one of our audience members, no. you probably are have left those days long behind you. OK, so as a guest, the number one rule is don't offend the person who was kind enough to invite you into their home. Yes, that is a great. Rule. Right. So um, if it's a dinner party. Uh, I'm going to start by saying we are in the era of the dietary restriction, right? People are mindful right. of what they can and cannot eat for health reasons, but also for their own personal reasons, whatever those may be. Okay. That said, the host is not responsible for you among all of their other guests. They can do the best Correct. that they can, but like, you don't need to be pushy with your dietary restrictions, right? They're probably right. going to ask, right? They might say like, well, I'm going to have this, but I also know that X, Y, Z is, is vegan. So I'm going to also have that. Right. But you don't need to be pushy about it. So, um, if, if you are on a strict eating regimen by choice, I'm going to say, eat what you can on the plate. And then like, don't draw attention to why you chose not to eat it, especially in front of the host. Right. Like right. just don't do that. If you're concerned about being hungry, either eat a little snack beforehand, eat your dinner beforehand, or just decline the invitation and say like, you know, I have really strict dietary needs and I just can't, I appreciate the sentiment. Let's get together and do X, Y, Z some other time. Right. Um, as a host, like strive for inclusion, sure. right? Nothing can be as isolating as food and you're sitting at a table and everybody has the same plate. It, it doesn't feel great if you can't eat it. Um, so when you invite someone, ask them, do you have dietary restrictions? What are your dietary mm -hmm. needs? Um, make it open that conversation so that someone doesn't have to come to you. Um, now, if you ask the question, you Gotta yeah. Adhere to it. Yeah. You can't just be like, oh, I know you told me you're vegan, but everything oh. here is made with milk and butter and eggs. So thanks. Yeah. So thanks. Um, but if you are a guest and you have strict 
dietary needs, ask, may I bring blank instead of what can I bring, mm-hmm. right? Say, can I bring a salad? Um, can I bring a mm-hmm. side? Or straight up say, like I have a good friend who is very, very, very gluten free. Mm. Right? Like she just eating something that was cooked in the same pan is enough for her to have a oh, flare wow. up. Yeah. Um, and so she brings her own food and she says, I know it's weird, but is it okay if I bring my own food? And it's like, yeah, as a matter of fact, it is. I'm so happy that you can come. So she'll bring her little food and, um, put it, uh, either if the plate is good, she can put it on a plate or she just brings it in a little Tupperware and sits at the table and she eats alongside us. Oh, that works. I like it. Yeah. And she explains, right? Like. It's nothing against you. It's nothing against anything that you're making, but I'm highly sensitive. And is it okay if I bring my own food? Yeah. But asking if you can bring a salad or if you can bring a side and you know it's something that you can eat, most of the hosts will say, yeah, I'm making pot roast. Bring something that goes with that. Makes sense. Okay. (laughs) This one is for me. (laughs) We talked about stains in one of our previous episodes and primarily because you and I both make a mess. Please don't use a cloth napkin to clean up your red wine spills. Like oh, yeah, if no. it's a cloth napkin or a linen napkin, like don't don't do that, especially with red wine. Now, I I am very intentional about red wine and I don't drink it in public because I know I spill on myself, on other things, on people. I did not know I do that not about drink you. red wine in public. I won't do it. Even if it's like <laughs> if there's like a steak in front of me at a restaurant and like red wine is what goes with that okay, fine, because I'm at a restaurant and I know they're equipped to handle that sort of thing. But I don't, I don't oh drink red wine. Oh my probably. gosh, that is so mm-hmm. I also get like... Talk about knowing right. yourself. I also get like purple lips and purple teeth if I eat, like after like a sip. So I'm just like, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. I won't touch it. But I spill. I don't drink more than four shots of tequila in public. How's that? <laughs> Talk about knowing yourself. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to say this. Spills happen. It's not about the spill. It's how you handle the spill, right? Everyone knows. Do you remember those brush-ups? Do you remember those? It was like a little thing you slipped on your finger and you would like scrub your teeth after you drank red wine. I used it on my lip because I'll have like red. Yeah. Do they still make those? I hope so. I'm over here like using my finger or like the underside of my shirt. Like, yeah. Did people just say I could just use a regular toothbrush instead of that little <laughs> finger thing? Not if you're in public. What are you going to do? Excuse me. Like just start brushing at the, <laughs> like at the table? No. Yeah, well, you didn't do that thing at the table, did you? Sometimes I'll rub my lip at the table, but it, it doesn't look as... Yeah, rub, rub your yeah. lip. No, I'm talking about the thing that you would like no. slide on your finger and then brush your teeth. <laughs> no, I don't think I would have done that at the table. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. No, you're Continue good. Um, so it's it's more about how you handle that spill ask the host what they want you to use to clean it up like if they say hang on let me go get paper towels don't touch anything wait until they get the paper towels if they say oh please don't bother let me do it don't touch it let them do it because they probably are saying that for a reason please don't try to blot it up and ruin someone's napkins like oh okay so um if they are using paper napkins mm-hmm. and they are not white, yeah. also do not use them to oh, clean a spill. Because stain. paper napkins have so much yep. dye in them that when you get them wet, the dye Transfer. can then go onto the mm-hmm. tablecloth or the carpet or whatever it is you're that you're right. trying to clean up. You're absolutely right. So seriously, just say, hey, I spilled this. Now, here's the other thing. Your napkin should stay in your lap until the host or hostess picks hers up and puts it on the table. Mm. If they haven't put their napkin on the table, manners, you know, Emily Post says you keep it in your lap. Really? I did not know that. Mm-hmm. And if you are getting up mid-meal, um, you neatly fold it and put it to the left side of your place. Oh. Setting. Do not leave it on your chair. Do not hang it over the back Ew. of your chair. Um, and then what you'll notice is um, if you're out somewhere of a certain caliber, Someone will come back and refold your napkin for you and replace it. But, um, yeah, you don't leave it on the chair. Oh, my goodness. I hadn't – I don't know if I'd noticed, but that's 
interesting information for me. The other piece of this is if you are someone who wears lipstick, blot it. Please blot it before you wipe your lipstick on someone's napkin, a cloth napkin. Blot your lipstick or make sure it's that kind that doesn't transfer. That happens too. But just don't wipe yes. your lipstick on their napkins. Ugh, gross. Okay. Another thing, and this one is going to be tough for people because we all know when you show up at someone's house, especially for some sort of dinner party, you need to bring something for that person. It's like bring a bottle of wine, you bring whatever it is. Here's the problem with that. When you bring something, you need to ensure that it's not something that's going to take up valuable fridge space. This person Mm. is hosting a dinner party or a party of some sort where there is food, which means there is more food than normal in their refrigerator, which means the space in the refrigerator is lacking. So if you show up with a bottle of wine that needs to be chilled and say, here you go, then you're taking up valuable fridge space. Same thing with a six pack, which is even bulkier than a bottle of wine. It's not okay to bring something that's going to take up valuable fridge space. And if you're like, oh, I brought the six pack for me to drink. Okay. It's a dinner party. They probably like put together a menu that has beverages that go along with that. No, you're not. You're not going to drink your six pack while you No, you're not. Cause that's just rude. Don't do that. So consider bringing something else. Bring, uh, maybe you can assume this person probably likes to cook, right? head to a yeah. local nice grocery store and find some like really nice meat for them to cook that they could use later. Find a beautiful um, bottle of vinegar or olive oil at a farmer's market or just prime that mess to yourself and be like, oh, look at this gorgeous bottle of extra virgin olive oil. Here you go. That can sit on their counter. They can use it later. They don't have to put it in the fridge that's a big deal. And if you're going to bring flowers, bring flowers that are already in a vase so that you're not making them stop, put flowers in a vase during their dinner party and giving them more work to do. Right. In our gifts episode, we talked about wrapping these things in a tea towel so that they get a a little towel as part of their That's a really good idea. Love that. Also, dinner party and probably cocktail party too. Don't show up fashionably late. Yeah, no. Okay. Don't be the guest who shows up an hour late. Um, A cocktail party, you probably have like a 10 or 15 minute window to show up, right? Um, You don't want to be the first one there. I understand that. That's always awkward for everyone. However, if it's a dinner party, that means that they're planning to serve food at a certain time and you need to show up on time for that food. If you're the person who is like showing up after the meal is supposed to start, Like, come on, don't be that person. It's awful. That's just really bad. It is. And um, I would say on the flip side, don't be too early either. Um, Because if someone is cooking, they're probably using all of that time and trying to time their meal so that it matches the arrival that they set. So if they said come at 7 and you show up at 6.30, at my house, at 6 30 i'm not nope. even dressed <laughs> i i am fr- uh, frantically trying to chop or get something in the oven before i go upstairs and get dressed which is always the last yep. thing i do because like you caitlin i spill yep. and i spill a lot yep. when i'm cooking and i tend to wipe my hands like on my shirt or yep. on my apron so don't show up half an hour before i tell Great. you to because Cause I'm not no, ready for I, you. I'm going to use that last 18 minutes to wipe myself down with the baby wipe and then slap some clown paint <laughs> on my face and get myself ready to go. Like, so that the last, so the cleanest thing in the house is going to be me, but it's going to be with the baby wipe probably. So just putting that out there. Okay. So those are some guest rules. I'm going to move into host rules now. Okay. Sounds great. As the host, your rule for the night is you are fun facilitator. Okay. I understand that you probably feel like head chef also and head server, right? You're front of house and you're back of house. I get that. Okay. (laughs) But you're tonight's scheduled entertainment. Right. You are fun facilitator. Okay. Mandatory fun is happening around you. That is your job. So don't spend all your time in the kitchen. 
don't do it. Okay. The key to being a great host is not being stuck in the kitchen when all of your guests have arrived. Now, if you have one of those houses, like I have where literally like your kitchen is open to the entire living room and you're spending your time in the kitchen, everyone's going to be in there with you. So you're not gonna be able to get things done anyway. You might as well have set yourself up for success by being ready to go when people show up and having it arranged and ready. Okay. So choose something that you can make ahead of time, be served in one dish at the table, or if you're fancy and you can get someone to help you with that serving, right? Get someone to make sure that the food comes out to you at a timely manner. That's another cool way to do that right? And get dessert taken care of by a professional. Unless you are someone who can bake. I'm, I'm a pretty good baker, so I'll say that. But I would rather have something that I could bake ahead of time and then pre right, right, right. like cut up or whatever so that I can just have it be served and ready to go or just choose coffee, right? Like get a professional to do it, make it something ahead of time or just serve coffee. And when people are done with their coffee, then you can kick them out. Of house. <laughs> just make it easy on yourself so that you aren't constantly in the kitchen the entire time and not enjoying your guests because they're there to hang out with you. Right. There you go. Right. Okay. Don't seat couples together at the table. You're going to be tempted to seat couples together. And some couples are going to be like, they might not know anyone else. Like whenever I go to an event and I don't know anyone else, I am stuck like white on rice to my husband. Right. Like that's just how it is. Yeah. No, I'm right. For sure. However, you're trying to facilitate mingling and you're trying to facilitate conversation. And if you seat couples together, there's a good chance they're going to only talk to each other and not to other people at mm. the dinner party. So, how interesting. Yeah. So, I'm going to say split couples up even if it's across the table and if you can alternate like male female. Now, yeah. if there are people who are like non-gender conforming, put them wherever you feel like it makes sense. You can also like group people based on common interests. Right. Like Bobby likes podcasting. Oh, no way. Caitlin also likes podcasting. Maybe I should put them next to each other so that they can talk about podcasting. That makes sense. You can do that here. Right. And if the party is larger than four people, it's going to sound cheesy. It's going to sound very Martha Stewart, but like use a place card. You can put their name on ornamental gourds if you want to, or you can just like put a sticker who cares just like put it so that people yeah. don't go oh well I'll sit here and uh, uh, no like because then you're gonna have people sitting next to people that they're comfortable with and not necessarily having that mingling new conversation right and if you're a host sit at the end of the table that's your job yes right yeah okay yes all right also know that if you sit at the head of the table at a restaurant you are offering to pay Oh, <laughs> according to Emily Post. Whoopsie. Keep that in mind. All right. Don't have an extended cocktail hour. <sighs> okay. I, I know where you're going with this and I'm already starting to feel uncomfortable. Okay. The best episode, this is arguable. So I'm just going to put this out there. The best episode of the office is the dinner party episode. Okay. This is the uh. one where the cold open is Michael pretending to cancel late night work and then inviting Pam and Jim over to his house for dinner with Jan. This is the episode where we learn that Michael runs through the glass door because he thought he heard the ice cream truck. This is the one where he dips his food in his red wine. This is the one where he thinks he, he's being poisoned by Jan because her cooking is so bad that he thinks she's trying to poison him. He sleeps on the bench. He sleeps at the foot on of the, the bench bed. at the foot of the bed. Um, she like right. She makes bonfire candles. Um, this is the best episode the ever. TV. He talks about he pushes the TV into the <laughs> wall. This is the best episode ever. But remember that Jan is making osabuco, and it takes three hours for it to cook. So she traps the guests there. For three hours. She says everything else is done, but the osabuku needs to braise for three hours. 
hours. Oh my gosh. What? Who does that? Do not. No, let me tell you this. I love the idea that it's a dish that needs to braise for three hours as a like potential host. Yes. Meal. Because you could get it in the oven yes. at three o'clock and then have time to prep and get the table set and yourself ready. And then when your guests arrive, you can just pull it out of the oven right. and it's ready. You do not put something in when people arrive that takes no. three hours. Oh gosh. So yes, you want to spend time with your friends and family, but they don't want to be held hostage at your house. So think one hour max for cocktails. You could even do 30 to 45 minutes and then move on to dinner. You're also going to want to ensure that there is some sort of level of balance between flexibility of what people can do with their time and structured time, right? Like, so cocktail right. hour, free floating people throughout the house, whatever it may be, but dinner time scheduled everyone is seated at the same time and we're all eating together. So have a nice balance there and do not, do not hold your guests hostage for that amount of time. No. Um, you can consider shaving some time off of this by having fewer drink options. So just, you know, I've opened a bottle of wine and I have some sparkling water, like I just set mm -hmm. those out so that people can serve themselves and they see what the mm -hmm. options are. Or you could have a few cocktails mm -hmm. prepped right? Like I'm offering margaritas tonight. I've already blended them. They're ready to go. Pull the pitcher out of the freezer yep. and say, okay, this is what we right. have. Would right. you like one? And the answer is yes or no. It's not, oh, well I'll have this. And your next thing you know is you're handcrafting four or five different types right. of drink. No. Which if you're my dad, he loves that. Like he lives right. for it. You know, the bar is open and you can order whatever you want. He has the ingredients <laughs> and he'll sit there and hand crack the ice. But that's some people are some people like that but that's also part of the thing right like you know that's what you're going right. for whereas if this is a dinner party it's exactly. a different thing yeah, okay right. so this is my last piece of advice this is for both people both host and guest do not preemptively clear the plates from the table oh. so if you're the host don't start clearing plates when there's people who are still actively eating if you, if you finish and you see that other people are like starting to wind down, there's napkins coming up on tables. People are sitting back in their chairs, <laughs> right? Sure. Go ahead and like give it a few minutes, you know, maybe 10 minutes after everyone's done eating and then you can stand up and start clearing plates. The problem with doing that is that once you do your guests, if they're still eating, they're going to take that as a cue that it's time to wrap it up and they'll either rush through their food or they'll stop eating altogether. And that's not what you want. You don't want anyone to feel rushed with their food. Right? Yeah. Right. I have a rule when I host dinner that no dishes get done that night. Oh. And I even, I even say it when someone offers to help I say, Oh no, 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 no. I don't, I don't do dishes the night that I have friends over. I love that. And I, I might have someone help me scrape plates and then stack them back on the dining table. But um, I want to enjoy the evening as well. I'm the fun facilitator. So um, I just I just don't do the dishes. So then night. what do you do to, to get that out of the way? Like if, if dishes are on the table, do you just move to a different location in the house? Yeah. So I say, let's go to the living room and have dessert or we're going to have dessert on the patio. Um, and just move to another space for dessert and coffee. Um, but I, I just leave it and say, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it tomorrow. It'll Love all be that there. Idea. That's brilliant. If you are the guest and the host is sitting and enjoying their guests and not moving, don't stand up and start cleaning up again. Then the host feels like they haven't done their job of keeping things moving and all of that you're going to make people feel uncomfortable um other people will start to feel like they have to clean up like just don't bother the other thing is um it is okay to offer your host a hand with cleanup i encourage that yeah, in fact it's expected right. however if they decline your offer and they say oh no 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 just sit tight as jenny just explained she does with her guests sit tight like don't don't just right. start doing it. Um, it makes people feel uncomfortable when you do that. And they're probably telling you that for a reason. Maybe they're going to wait till the next day to clean up. 
Maybe they have someone coming to help them to take care of it later. You don't know what the circumstances are, but you definitely offer. Those dishes might not go with right. the dishwasher. You offer to help. And then, you you know, if they say, if you just want to stack them or you want to grab the wine glasses and just bring them into the kitchen and then leave it there. That's what you do. You always follow your host's lead. Do not go above and beyond what they tell you to do. And if they tell you to leave the dish at the table, it's going to make you uncomfortable, but you're going to leave the dish at the table. Yeah. Right. Now, if they accept Mm -hmm. your offer, follow their Mm -hmm. lead again, because you can say, okay, I'll wash and you dry. Mm -hmm. Um, What do you want me to help you put the food Mm -hmm. away? Get a a specific Mm -hmm. task because they probably have a a routine in their mind about how this Mm -hmm. is going to work. Um, the other thing is you could always start by saying, oh, can I take out the trash? Oh, that's a good one. Because for me, because chances are the trash yep. is full because they've been cooking yep. all day um, or the trash is full because you just scraped mm-hmm. plates. And so that's an easy task that you can't really screw right. up and the host can pass on to you. Right. Good for me, it. I... I mean, this is going to come as a surprise to many people, especially you, but I like things to be done just so, right? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So for me, if I have someone who's like loading the dishwasher for me, I play dishwasher Tetris. So I'm going to go back in and rearrange what you did in the dishwasher, right? Like right. it's going to bother me. Um, I... I also don't like to be fielding questions about, oh, where does this dish go? Where does that dish go after you've dried them off? So I'm just going to tell you to stack them, right? So for me, it's if I'm telling you, oh, no, 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 don't worry about it. I mean, don't worry about it because otherwise I'm going to go back in and fix it anyway. So please just just leave it. Just leave it alone for me, right? It's fine. But you can definitely take out the trash. I always like to ask. It's fine. Is there a task I can do that doesn't take more mental energy to describe yes. to me than it would for you to just right. do it yourself? Taking out the trash is one of those things. Bringing the recycling yeah. out to the recycling bin is one of those things. That's a great task right. for anyone who asks, how can I help? Oh, you can take the trash out. Perfect. I'm going to use that from now on. Oh, it's Love great. It. Okay. So to recap, I've given you... Eight, is that eight, right? Is that right? Eight things that you should do as a dinner party host or guest. So we're going to say your main rule is to not offend people, right? So don't offend your host who invited you to their house and don't offend your guests by making them feel uncomfortable. Don't be pushy with dietary restrictions. Don't use cloth napkins to clean up any red wine spills. Don't bring a gift that requires fridge space. Don't show up fashionably late to a dinner party. Don't spend all of your time in the kitchen if you're a host. Don't put your couples together. You want to facilitate fun and conversation. Don't hold your guests hostage like Jan Levinson from The the Office. (laughs) And don't start cleaning up too soon. Always follow your host's lead when it comes to the cleanup process and, um, and leaving their home, right? Well, this is the part of the show where I tell you, if you liked us, you should tell the world and um, give us that five-star review, write something nice about us, um, consider us your host, and that's your way of thanking us for the evening, um, and make good choices. Bye, babe. Bye, babe. <laughs> Don't be a jam. Okay, bye.